so this is part two of the Ultimate Dana 30 build that I'm building for my Jeep Wrangler TJ. It's an XJ high pinion 30 axle. We're going to be doing a full truss in this video as well as some inner C gussets beefing that up. And then I'm also going to be modifying the coil buckets where the springs go. We'll do bar pin eliminators and I'll be trimming some areas in the back so we can get some more droop on either side of the axle. So I'll get all into that. But if you haven't yet watched the last video, where I installed some inner axle sleeves. We drilled a bunch of holes in the tubes and welded those sleeves in to make the tubes one complete heavy wall, half inch thick axle tube. Now some of the welding process is going to be the same, except in this video, we're going to be doing a new process I really haven't covered much. So there's going to be some tech on how to weld mild steel to cast steel. And it's very simple. We'll get to that later in the video. And I'm really excited about it. So let's get to work. This is the Barnes four wheel drive axle truss for the high pinion Dana 30. Also selectable for the low pinion 30. The Dana 44 and the 60, all very similar in design. Heavy duty 316 material thicknesses for the truss and all the parts in the kit, as well as the upper control arm bushing, which replaces the factory control arm mount is quarter inch in thickness. I really like the laser cut design. You can see everything's been bent on a press brake. This thing's gonna be super strong. It's gonna really stiffen up this axle. There are a few things that we're going to need to do in order to weld this new steel to the old steel is prepping all of the material surfaces like the cast steel should be super clean, the tubing and as well as all of these laser cut edges from the process of making the truss um, should also be clean from free of oils and contaminants. So there's gonna be a lot of preparation and the hope is to avoid any type of slag inclusions, weld impurities that would create some kind of porosity or weld failure. As a beginner welder, I learned early on that the preparation and the fit up of your welding components are going to take some time. And the more time and effort you put into the preparation and fit up, the better results you're going to have. Now the inner C's are also laser cut, so we will have to cut those into its pieces and fit those up to the inner C's as well. There might be some sanding and grinding that you'll need to do to make those fit perfectly. And what I like to do is go through and wipe down everything that I'm gonna be welding with some isopropyl alcohol. This will help remove any contamination and oils from where we're gonna be welding. The truss requires some assembly. We'll have to take the rib parts and drop them into their designated slots. There's just three pieces. And then I'll go ahead and tack those in and check the fit up, up to the axle. Moving along to the upper control arm mount, we'll take the two pieces and put them in their designated key slot. And we'll go ahead and tack those in. Just make sure you have the dom when you do that so everything is squared up onto the truss. And then we could finish weld the upper mount to the truss as well as all of the seams and the plug holes for the ribs. So now we can fit up the truss to the axle to get ready to tack in place. Barnes recommends that we make a difference of 9 degrees from the pinion angle and axle truss. So we just want to set back the axle truss about 9 degrees for both the short and long sides. Then we can tack it in place.
I'm going to be using this matte gas torch to heat up the cast before we start welding it. There are a couple ways that you can weld cast to dissimilar metals like mild steel is to use like a nickel rod or a nickel wire in the process. But if you heat up the cast in enough, you will be able to make a pretty decent weld without it forming any kind of cracks or anything. So I'm going to take my laser thermometer here and just check the overall temperature we want to bring up the cast to about 500 450 degrees and then we'll start our welding So it definitely seems as if we got plenty of heat in that inner seat on the driver's side. Originally I was using my map gas torch to heat it up and then eventually I switched over to my propane weed burner which seemed to put a lot more heat into that inner seat much faster. Now as far as the strategy for post cooling, we did use the weed burner to cool those welds down for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I wrapped it up with an insulated welding blanket really slow down the cooling process so we can prevent any type of cracking. So we will have to closely monitor these welds. So this side will be pretty much like our test side if we need to make any adjustments to our strategy for this type of welding technique. Now I don't see any cracking in these welds so I'm going to continue with this technique over on the passenger side. Five hours later. Oh yeah, definitely looks a lot beefier. I like that. Whew, it's still hot. <laughs> so whether you're a new fabricator or just trying out this process for the first time, maybe just know that both the materials heat and cool at different rates and by preheating it, we don't shock the material into a high heat. And then also once we get up to a high heat, they both cool somewhat at the same rate so we can eliminate or prevent cracking. So now that we know our technique is actually pretty solid, no cracking, welding to cast, I'm going to start working on the truss. Now I went through and marked a bunch of spots where I don't want to weld. I do want some drainage. I don't want this thing inside to fill up with water. So about every inch and a half we'll do a weld and then it'll do another inch and a half gap to another weld and we'll kind of space out the welds and stagger them that way we don't focus too much heat on the tube so it doesn't start to bend or twist or warp on us that's the strategy So the next thing I need to do is cut these off. Now for this next set of modifications, I feel the advantages are really gonna wake this axle up on the trail. We'll get a little bit more clearance out of the lower control arms on the droop side, as well as get some more shock extension. And it will also eliminate the bar pin on the bottom of the shock, and we'll really beef up this mount with some quarter inch plating and get it all welded in. Now anytime I can reuse components in my build, I'll definitely try to do that. These here are for the sway bar end links from my old lift. Went ahead and just repurposed those for the shock bar pin eliminators. It's just a U-shaped bracket. We'll go ahead and weld that in as well. And we are completely done. I've got the whole entire axle brushed down with a wire brush using my drill got all the welds cleaned up, all the rust removed, and then I went ahead and even painted it with some 2X primer satin black. 
and I really love this finish. I painted some wheels about three or four years ago, and those are still holding up. Now, as you can see, for the lower control arm, go ahead and set that in, throw the bolt in for you. Now, on the back end of this spring perch, we cut off about a good inch and a half. As you can see, when the axle droops, it makes contact with that back end of the spring perch. So now that it's cut off, we'll have that much more clearance. We'll be able to droop a bit more, and this is going to definitely be a great advantage while we're on the trail. All right, everybody, so that's going to wrap it up for the end of this video. I felt like all of the modifications done were pretty solid. All the welds came out pretty good. And yeah, I'm excited about the next video where we're going to install some gears in this axle. Now, I was going to ask you, should I cut out some time and pre-make all of the setup bearings and races for setting up the gears? Or should I share that with you guys? Let me know in the comment box below. I would really like to know if I should add that or subtract that to the next video of the Ultimate Dana 30 build. So that's going to be in part three. I'll reveal the gear ratio and everything in that video. But overall, man, I'm super excited about getting this axle under the Jeep and moving on to building up the 40. So stay tuned for that. And we're going to end the video. All of the materials and everything I used in this video, I'll leave in the description box below. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. i try to get to those as much as I can. And with that, we're going to end the video here. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.